Venom here. This is going to be a book review of The Forgotten Soldier by Guy Sire. Now, Guy Sire was born to, was half French and half German. I believe his father was from Alsace-Lorraine and he was an Alsatian, you know. Um, his, his mother was German. But he didn't speak very, very good German. He spoke, you know, decent German, but not that good. It was bad. And his French was very good. So what happened was he joined the army and he started, he, he joined the army and he became part of the logistics company. He was uh, supposed to send uh, different companies uh, their rations and, and, and supplies. So his first mission was to go to Stalingrad and to try and supply the men at Stalingrad. But on his way there, he encountered a lot of partisans and he saw... And he saw a lot of looting on trains and he saw wounded soldiers going back to Germany on these trains as well, you know. <clears throat> and on his way to Stalingrad, he found out that the 6th Army surrendered. And he couldn't believe his ears and eyes that such a big army was surrendering. He thought that the 6th Army was invincible. But they really weren't. Now, moving on, he actually went on leave, you know. He, and then he had a, um, a, a girl that he met called Paula. And she was the love of his life. He ended up seducing her and they were having very nice conversations. But then he started to see the war deteriorating around him and... All of the people that he loves, he started seeing them dying all around him. And then he's like, uh, wow, this is a very interesting story. You know, it's very riveting. You know, and he doesn't feel accepted because he's half French and half German. His dad is a full French man. And his dad comes back to me when he was on. Excuse me, guys. <laughs> his dad comes back to meet him. When he's on leave from the front, you know, and the thing about Germany in World War Two, there's a lot of deserters. So you need to have your your um, your papers with you at all times to prove that you're on leave. So there's going to be military policemen at different checkpoints within Germany itself. <clears throat> And I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but he didn't actually get to go to France to go meet his parents. His parents came to Germany to meet him because he didn't have enough leave time to travel all the way to France. So his parents had to come meet him in Germany. He met a girl, but she wasn't really into him. He just got drunk and stuff like that. Like, he saw a lot of crazy stuff. He saw dead bodies piled on top of each other in trains. And he and he survived the Russian winter, which, was, which is insane in of itself. And I'm surprised that he even survived. He was very lucky to survive this audio. Extremely lucky. He could have died at any moment. With those partisans in those forests where he has to clear the partisans. Basically, he was part of the... <clears throat> like, you know, the regular army is at the front line. He's behind the front lines mopping up and doing anti-partisan duties to secure the supply lines. That was his job. That was what he was supposed to do during this campaign. And then the war starts to go badly for them. And they have to retreat. And he sees more men dying around him. The people that he started the campaign with, all his friends, most of his friends are dead. Uh, only a couple of his friends are left. Towards the end, he just keeps retreating because the Soviets are closing in. They're closing in on Germany itself. You know, he feels that he was lied to and betrayed and... He, how did he feel? I mean, the guy was a proud supporter of the Nazis. Like, 
you know, just like just like that other guy, what's his name, Erwin Bartman. He was he was also a ardent Nazi. He supported the Nazi regime. Did this guy support it? I mean, he was a little less extreme than Erwin Bartman, the Frau Volk and Führer guy. But because that guy is part of the SS, um, Guy Sire wasn't part of the SS. And he actually tried out for the Luftwaffe at the beginning of the of the story. He told us in the epilogue that he tried out for the Luftwaffe. He tried to become a Luftwaffe pilot, but he failed the test. He couldn't pass. So in the end, he ended up just joining the army because he couldn't make it. He couldn't hack the... <clears throat> He couldn't hack the pilot test. He failed it. So the Luftwaffe gave him back to another unit. He had to join the regular army. Why did he join the army? Because he wanted the spoils of war. He felt that the life was monotonous and boring. So, you know, these many of these men, you know, uh, young boys, they joined the army and joined the war out of a sense of boredom. Like they left, their lives were too boring, so they wanted some excitement. But, you know, they definitely learned the hard way that war is not exciting and it's not fun. Now, would I recommend, uh, you know, people to read this book? Yeah, it's a very good book. You know, it's exciting. Um, it's going to keep you interested throughout the whole book. You know, there's a lot of things in there. But, I mean, you have to have patience. You know, these kind of books are very long. Uh, unless uh, unless unless you're not very good at reading books and you don't have the patience like that, you should probably read listen to an audio book, on Audible. It's also available on Audible as well. You can you can read you can listen to the book on Audible audio book on Audible. Um. Yeah, like the partisans' duties were probably the scariest part of the book. You know, it's very captivating experience. You know, I'm not going to ruin everything for you guys, but um, he does end up surviving the war, though. You know, he doesn't die, but he's helped man, you know, all these German words. I've learned a lot of new German words since reading this book. It's pretty interesting. Um, very interesting stuff. You know, and it's, and it's funny to hear that his dad, he, his dad thinks that they live in luxury, but he doesn't live in luxury. He, he gets the basic food rations that, <clears throat> that the army troops get. He doesn't get extra rations. Like, he gets basic rations. He lives a shitty life. He's just fighting death on every corner. Like, <clears throat> it's not like all fun and roses for him, but, he, but his father that lives in France, he, he sees that the Nazis are just taking all of the supplies in France. They're plundering the local economy and just taking everything for themselves. His father thinks that he lives in luxury, but he doesn't. You know, he's just a fucking lowly captain. Not even a captain, he's a private. <laughs> he's nothing at this point. Like, he has no rank. So he's basically not that important. And... And... and how many rations you get in the army is is base is very important and tied to rank. But um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. I'm out. Peace.